Well, good morning. And welcome to the National Museum of Natural History. My name is Kirk Johnson. I'm the uh, SANT director of the National Museum. I've been here for 10 and a half months and uh, been very much enjoying wallowing in the smorgasbord of science and culture that this, is, this museum and represents the Smithsonian. And we're here today to host a symposium on the African diaspora, integrating culture, genomics, and history. And you might casually wonder why here? But I would make the argument that this is a really great place for this symposium. We've got um, three exhibits presently that are very directly related to the topic. Of course, our permanent exhibit, African Voices, which talks about the culture of Africa and involving very actively the voice of Africa. And we opened a new exhibit, a small exhibit within that one called The Mud Masons of Mali, about those phenomenal um, mud structures that are remudded every year and uh, involving the actual voices of the masons themselves, the people that do the remudding of the, this, those uh, amazing uh, architectural structures. We have the Human Origins exhibit, which speaks very directly to the origin of humanity in Africa and the origin of the human species and the uh, original African diaspora of all humanity. And of course, we have this exhibit, Genome Unlocking Life's Code, the new temporary exhibit that we built in a direct um, collaboration and partnership with the National Institutes of Health's National Human Genome Research Institute. Amazing exhibit. It's been seen, we think, by over a million people since it opened just a few months ago. And it's a very compelling exhibit. I warn you, if you go in there, it's hard to get out of there. It's a very sticky exhibit, as we say in the museum business. So all those things um, make the case for having the symposium here, and I'm here to welcome you to that symposium. We've got a fabulous series of panels with great speakers. Um, we'll have a number of our um, own staff here and close friends. We'll have with us Lonnie Bunch, who is the director of the National Museum of African American History and Culture, and also Dr. Janetta Cole, who's the uh, director of the National Museum of African American Art. We also have uh, scholars from around the country, and I'm looking forward to hearing from all of them. And I will now pass the podium to Eric Green, who's the director of the National Human Genome uh, Research Institute. Thank you very much for coming, and enjoy the day. Well, thank you, Kirk. I'm, I'm Eric Green, director of the National Human Genome Research Institute. And I, on behalf of NHGRI and the National Institutes of Health, wanted to Welcome the speakers and all the attendees who will be joining us today. Um, we are here at the Smithsonian. I thought I would just say a couple words about the National Institutes of Health, uh, headquarters of which is located in Bethesda, Maryland, just about 10 miles from here. Um, our institute, the National Human Genome Research Institute, is one of 27 institutes and centers that comprise the National Institutes of Health, and in many ways, the NIH, as it's uh, referred to, is sort of the center of the universe worldwide for health research, with each of the institutes um, having a discrete focus on particular areas relevant to human health and disease. Uh, the institute that I'm fortunate to direct um, is one focused on genomics, um, and it was originally created for the Human Genome Project to lead the U.S.'s effort in the Human Genome Project, and then when the Genome Project ended in 2003, is now carrying out a number of important studies really all revolving around our central mission, which is to understand the structure and the function of the human genome and its role in health and disease. And so to that end, as you might imagine, our institute is very much involved in developing resources and technologies that allow us to accelerate genomic research and also see its application to improving the nation's health. But uh, coming hand in hand with that, which really started at the origins of the Human Genome Project, our institute is also committed um, to studying the ethical, the legal, and the social implications of doing genomics research and also being very cognizant and very involved in thinking about how to educate the public when it comes to genomics. And um, that, that is the reason why a little over two years ago we developed this partnership with the National Museum of Natural History and the Smithsonian um, to develop this um, amazing exhibition, which I hope you will all see if you haven't already, uh, Genome Unlocking Life's Code, and also have these subsequent meetings and symposium built around it while it is resident here in this building for the next uh, roughly another 11 months or so. In all, about 16 public education programs over the course of the next year will be held, and this is, is one of them. 
Now, you may ask the question, why is NHGRI interested in this conversation and this topic for this symposium? What I can tell you is that ancestry and genomics are of great importance and of great interest to the public. And it's really the entrance to genomics for many of the people who are exploring this. And obviously, the information is complicated and the science is actually complicated. Um, but as a result, we're very interested since that's their entry point to genomics and facilitating their understanding. Um, it was one of the uh, of many reasons for the kinds of exhibition that was developed um, over the last couple of years. And so I can tell you in 1990 when we created our ethical, legal, and social implications program, it really became an integral part of the genomics community and of our institute and at that time of the Human Genome Project. And it really provided an opportunity for us to perform research into the ethical, legal, and social components of genetic and genomic research as they relate to individuals, families, and, and communities. And I can also tell you that the importance of this area in our eyes has only grown with time. And it was about 11 months ago that I reorganized the institute and created a new division called the Division of Genomics and Society, which is one of the seven divisions that make up our institute. And that is the, the, the division that really focuses on thinking about the societal issues as they relate to genomics um, research. And we're learning increasingly the important role that genomics knowledge is playing in understanding ancestral variation in health and disease. And so our role in this event today is as much as anything to bring genomics to the discussion, uh, which we think is very relevant to this. And we wish you a very productive and scholarly uh, discussion and presentations today as we think about culture and genomics and history as we explore the African diaspora and thinking about ancestry of African Americans. So thank you very much uh, for your attention and for joining us here today. And I want to now pass the baton uh, to Lonnie Bunch, who is the director of the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Good morning. Good morning. Raymond, you all raised better than that. Good morning. Good morning. That's much better. As the founding director of the National Museum of African American History and Culture, the Smithsonian's newest museum, a museum whose goal is pretty simple, is to centralize African American culture so that all of us recognize how we are profoundly shaped, informed, and made better by that culture. I have to tell you, I am very pleased to be here with my colleagues to welcome you to this wonderful symposium. I want to stop for a minute and recognize Mary Jo Arnaldi, who is the chair of the Department of Anthropology here in the Museum of Natural History, who for an essence, for all sense and purposes, is our host. So Mary Jo, thank you so much for this. As a historian, it is quite clear to me that the collision of science and race in America has not often been to the advantage of people of color. In fact, it has often been used to reinforce the worst attitudes and worst assumptions that have had a detrimental effect on the health, hopes, and rights of African Americans. What excites me about today's symposium is that it will help us understand both the possibilities and the limits of this important new science. It will help us raise and wrestle with fundamental questions of identity, ancestry, and race. In some ways, this is the wonderful kind of collaboration that is the Smithsonian at its best, to work with brother and sister institutions, to work with leading institutions outside of the Smithsonian. So we're pleased to be able to come together and share this exciting day with you. So on behalf of all my colleagues at the National Museum of African American History and Culture, I thank all of you for your participation. I trust you will have a stimulating and enjoying a joyful day. Thank you so much. And now it's my turn to turn this over to Vince Bonham. Vince. So good morning, everyone. Um, I am excited that this day has arrived and the conversation that we're going to have today. Again, my name is Vince Bonham. I'm at the National Human Genome Research Institute. I'm both a researcher and the lead of our education and community involvement branch. And I'm pleased on behalf of the Genome Institute uh, to, to, to again welcome you here this morning. So um, 
This conversation that we're going to have today as a symposium really comes from different perspectives and lenses. One of the exciting things that we hope about the day is bringing different disciplinary backgrounds and perspectives and expertise to a conversation of thinking about the African diaspora, and particularly African Americans, from a different lenses, a genomic lens, a cultural lens, an artistic lens, and a historical lens, to explore issues with regards to how we understand identity, race, difference, and how we think about who we are and where we fit within this, certain, this culture and society that we're in here in the United States. Um, so there's a couple things about the day. As you look at the agenda, you can see it is packed full. Uh, um, but one of the things that we have impressed on all of the speakers and the moderators is that we want to make sure that we leave time for questions and a conversation with the audience. Um, so all of the, the talks are going to be very brief. Uh, and there will be conversations between the panelists and raising issues, but also an opportunity for you to come to the mic and to ask questions and to provide your perspective on various topics. So I was also asked to take care of the housekeeping issues for us this morning. And I want to just start with the bathrooms. So the bathrooms are located near the Constitution Avenue entrance. And so as you came in on Constitution Avenue, um, that is where the bathrooms are located uh, as you need them throughout the day. Uh, we do have wireless services uh, within this auditorium. Uh, and the wireless code is diaspora uh, with a capital D and instead of an O with a zero. So uh, you can get online uh, within um, the room. What we don't want in the room is food. So please do not bring beverages or any refreshments into the room throughout the day. Uh, let's respect this beautiful building that's over 100 years old and this beautiful auditorium. Um, coffee, the coffee bar will open at 10 AM. That's an important issue, I know, for a lot of us to get our caffeine. Uh, and so when you go out um, after one of the morning sessions or at a break, uh, coffee will be available. Uh, we encourage you to visit, again, I'm, I'm going to follow up on both Dr. Johnson and Dr. Green, uh, encourage you to visit the exhibitions here uh, in the building today, particularly the African Voices and Genome Unlocking Life's Code. Um, we want to, you to engage with those exhibitions as part of this conversation and why we are doing this program here in this facility. So we, we hope at lunch hour that you will be able to go and to visit the exhibitions if you have not uh, to date. Uh, and the final housekeeping note is I just want to remind you that we are videotaping the day uh, and that we ask if you have a question um, that you go to the microphone. The acoustics in this room is beautiful, um, but no one on the video will hear you if you just stand up or yell out. So please, please go to the microphone. So um, as stated, this, this um, symposium is a partnership uh, between the Smithsonian Institution and the two museums and the National Institutes of Health, National Human Genome Research Institute. Uh, and it's one of those unique partnerships that I think is only just the beginning of how we explore and engage together to explore various topics and communicate to the public. Uh, and I want to take a minute and acknowledge the planning committee and thank them. Um, their names are in your program. Um, but again, I would like to recognize Mary Jo Arnali, um, uh, Deidre Cross, uh, Christina Dalton, um, Esther Washington, and our two external planning committee members, meaning they're not part of the federal government, Charmaine Royal at Duke University and Joanna Mountain at 23 and me. So again, thank you to them, our planning committee. And our meeting planners for this meeting are strategic results. They are at the registration desk. If you need any help or any questions, go to them, and they should be able to help get you the answers that you need. So without further delay, at this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Corey Dade, a uh, correspondent for The Root, uh, Dr. Sarah Tishkoff at the University of Pennsylvania, and Dr. Le Linda Haywood from Boston University. And finally, Dr. Michael Blakely at the College of William Mary as they set the stage for the symposium today. Thank you. Thank you.